Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 13. Uh, first of all, my apologies for the delay in posting late this week. Um, I got confused with the dates. <laughs> Sorry folks. Okay, so let's start with uh, question one, which is a basic arithmetic uh, question that involves decimals. Maria is preparing for a four mile race. Each individual mile was timed. 6 minutes, 7.4 minutes, 8.31 minutes, and 7.27 minutes. And they're asking you to calculate in minutes how long it took her to run the 4-mile distance. Okay, so this is a question that they might ask you for the portion of the GED where they do not allow a calculator. Okay, and what you have to remember is that when um, you are adding uh, numbers that have decimals, um, first of all, you would put them like that, right? So first mile, six minutes, two miles, uh, 7.4, etc. What you have to remember is when you add decimals, as I said, it's like adding whole numbers, but you have to make sure that you align your numbers and your decimal points correctly, okay? So if they asked you to add 1.2 plus 0 0.3, what you want to do, if you have to do this manually without a calculator, is to make sure that those decimal points are right, you know, one on top of the other. Okay, and then it's pretty straightforward. You just add uh, like that. So that would be 1.5. Okay, so what if they give you a whole number, right? So the 7 plus 0 0.3. Well, in this case, you have to remember that a whole number, another way to express it would be to say 7 is equal to 7.0. Okay, um, so to add, you would just simply align those numbers like that, and then it would be 7.3. Let's say that they ask you to add these numbers, 7 plus 0 0.345. So in this case, 7 is equal to 7.003, no, sorry, followed by three zeros. Um, and the reason, again, is because if you were to subtract uh, these two numbers from each other, um, or, or add in this case, it's much easier if you, you know, have that decimal point and those numbers after the decimal point aligned um, with your other number that you have to add. Okay, so um, if we add these, uh, we would simply change 6 to 6.00 minutes, and then we would change 7.4 to 7.40. Um, in that way, we can align all our decimal points nicely, and then uh, when we add this, it gives us 28.98 minutes, which was option C. Question two is from the applied arithmetic portion, and it looks at ratios and proportions. A team played 80 games this season and lost 25 of those games. If there were no tied games, what is the ratio of wins to losses? All right, so the first thing you want to do is to find out how many games that they lose. So here what you do is you take the total number of games, which was 80, you subtract 25, which was the games lost, and that would give you 55 games won. And in the question, they're asking you the ratio of wins to losses. Okay, so wins to losses. And we said that they had 55 wins and 25 losses. So that's how you would write the ratio. Okay, 55, a colon, and then 25. But if you look at the answer, um, and I, sorry, I gave it away there, um, that option is not available. So how do you get that number 11, uh, 11 to 5? Well, you would take your current uh, ratio, 55 to 25, and you would find a common denominator between these two numbers, which is 5. So you would divide both of them by 5, and then that would give you 11 to 5, okay? Because 55 divided by 5 is 11, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. So the correct answer would be C. Question 3 is an algebra problem, but it's actually a setup problem. So these are those problems that they give you where they want to see more your thought process than the correct answer. And this is a pretty engaged problem. You can see that there's a table and it's pretty long. 
So it reads, employees at a pharmaceutical company earn an hourly wage plus a commission depending on the years they've been at the company. Uh, Louise has been in the company for two years. If X represents the work, hours worked and S represents the total sales, which of the following expressions could be used to find her weekly pay? Okay, so first thing, let's look at the table. So the first column is going to tell us uh, how many years um, a person has worked in the company. And then column two tells us how much money they earn based on the years they've been on the company. And column three tells us their commission uh, rate. So in the case of Louise, uh, we know she's been working for two years in the company. So that would be um, her hourly wage would be $8. And then she would get a 3% commission for all of her sales. So in order to calculate her weekly pay, we would first multiply her hourly rate, $8, by the number of hours that she worked. And that's her baseline pay, right? And we would also add the 3% commission rate that she gets for every sale. So if you look at the question, in the question it tells you that um, X represents the hours worked. So in the first part of the equation, we would say um, 8 multiplied by X, okay, where 8 is the hourly rate and X are the hours worked, plus S, which uh, from the question it tells you that represents the sales, multiplied by 3% commission rate. So if you uh, write 3% in decimal form, it's 0 0.03. So if we go back to the question, the correct answer would be C. Okay, question four is another algebra problem. And here they're asking you for the solution to this equation. And essentially they're gonna just give you a, a set of, of numbers. Um, so there's two ways to do this. You can either uh, solve for X directly, um, or if you wanted to, in this case, I don't know why I decided to solve it a different way. So what I decided to do was to plug in the numbers into the equation instead of solving uh, for X. So if you take four, for example, um, and you plug it into equ the equation like that, on the right side, um, it would give you uh, three multiplied by 16 minus 10. And on the left, uh, excuse me, that's on the left side. And on the right side, eight minus two. And that would give you uh, 48 minus 10, which is equal to 38. So 38 is equal to six. So that is incorrect. So option A would be wrong. Um, option B would also be wrong because if we plug in three into the equation, and I'll just work it out very quickly. Oops, my battery's running out. Um, ultimately, we would end up with 17 is equal to four, which is also incorrect. And then if we plugged in letter D, the zero, this would give us um, minus 10 is equal to two, so that's wrong. So the correct answer would be C, which is two. Okay, and just to double check, let's plug that in. So three, uh, two squared is equal to four. Okay, multiplied by three minus 10 on the left side. And then on the right side, we have four minus two and then if you solve that, um, it gives you two equals two, okay? So the correct answer would be C. All right, the final problem is a geometry problem and it looks at a uh, volume of a re rectangle. Um, so for these geometry questions, they actually give you the formula, so you don't have to remember it, but you do have to remember that it is available for you and how to use it, okay? So the question reads, a card box has the following dim uh, dimensions. Uh, what is the volume of the box in cubic feet? Excuse me. So here, uh, what you would have to do is to look at the formula for a uh, rectangular prism, which is the volume is equal to the base multiplied by the height. And the base is actually made up of two numbers, the length multiplied by the width, 
Okay, so all you do is you plug in those numbers into your formula. So your volume would be uh, 2, which is the length, um, multiply, well, that's the width, actually, multiply it by 5, which is the length, and then you would multiply that by 4, which is the height. And that would give you a volume of 40 cubic feet. Okay, so you can see that the correct answer is C. All right, so these questions are a little bit, when you see them, they seem a little bit scary, but um, as you saw, the formula is pretty straightforward, um, and all you have to do is plug in those numbers to your formula. All right, folks, well, I hope that was helpful. Um, have a terrific week. Uh, keep pushing forward. Stay positive and stay strong. Thank you so much for your time.